Hello guys and welcome back to the Syntho YouTube channel. It's now 2023 and I thought I should provide you with some value. I'm taking a video out of the back catalogue from the Syntho library today and it's called What Your Drums Are Missing. Everyone's drums are missing something and in today's video I'm going to share with you some little nuggets that I think can help you make your drums sound more interesting. Quite simple stuff but very, very effective. Let me remind you that the Synth app is now launched. This is a social media meets music education place. The newsfeed is launching very soon. So if you're a producer and you want to meet like-minded people and also learn from some of the best producers in the world, you know where to head. The link will be attached to this video. But anyway, in the meantime, let's get stuck into this tutorial. Do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. Enjoy. Hello guys and welcome to today's video. Today we are doing a bit of a tutorial on getting back to basics, but the basics which always bring amazing results. We're going to be talking about drum processing, how we can make our drums more groovy, and I'm going to be just kind of letting you know about a lot of the mistakes that I see in people's tracks. Not necessarily mistakes, but the things it's lacking and why they are not getting to the next level. So for today, we're gonna to be using a sample pack which you all will be able to download, the vintage drum samples. And I'm gonna use the 808 kit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a kick pattern. I'll put this in here. And we are going to do and then another track channel. Actually, we're going to do it as a drum rack today. So I'm going to create drum rack. And we can just do a pattern in here. So I'm going to get some basic sounds first. We're going to get a kick. We're going to get a hat. Uh, we're going to get a conga. And we're also going to get a... Let's do a snare. So, these are very basic sounds, and the first thing we're going to talk about is, let me just draw a pattern, is I'm going to do a basic pattern, then we're going to just talk about call and response again. This is something I've gone on about since the very day I created Syntho, and still, people forget. It's easy to forget. I forget, and I need these sessions to kind of remind myself of the power so we're just going to play this groove now of a kick. Sounds good, right? So we're going to duplicate the loop. I'm going to add a simple kick here. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn the velocity down. Then watch what we've got. Already, we can feel when the start of the bar comes in. Dun, dun, dun. Then we're going to duplicate this again. And now we're going to take this kick out. I'm going to have this here. We're going to try this. See how this sounds. We could even have two there. And look at the difference between that. And that. And I've really noticed in a lot of these tracks I'm into at the moment is it's this constant call and response and having fills at the end of the bar. And when I say fill, I mean something that fills the last section that brings the whole groove back around. And it's really, really simple. Any of you watching this can do this. Whether you've literally just downloaded Ableton or you're making really good tracks, I can guarantee you're not doing enough of this. So the same thing happens for all of the drum sounds. So if we now put a closed hat in, actually we're going to do this. We're going to go on the kick. So first things first, this first um, hat on the kick, I'm going to bring the velocity down at the bottom. And then we're going to just duplicate these across and have a pattern that goes like this. Then 
and we're going to duplicate, duplicate these across again. Then we're going to try and do a little shuffle there, maybe. Bring the velocity down. Bring it maybe there. Do one more across, I think. Uh, let's put that on the kick. Maybe we could have one right at the end. And let's duplicate these all across. I think that sounds fine. These are just going over two bars, the pattern, and it's the same that end. That's fine with me. Not everything has to go over four. So that'll do me. Now let's do the snare. Let's go there. Let's duplicate this across again. And then again, click this one. Let's bring the velocities down on it so they change a bit. Let's put that there. I might like put like quite a big roll here. Turn this hat down. Okay, then let's do a conga then. Uh, it's a bit pitched up. So let's pitch this conga down. Go into controls, transpose. Let's see if any of the congas actually doesn't sound very nice that one. Uh, that's nicer. So we could just go let's duplicate this across again. Let's add this extra conga at the end of the bar, maybe. That's nice. Duplicate this across again. That shuffle there. So now we've got a super interesting groove that's going across four bars. Then we could even duplicate this, but we're not going to do that. Actually, let's do it. Fuck it. Duplicate it again. Then we could even put the extra snare there so it fully goes through there. Let's put a clap in as well, seeing as we've got room for one. Then we've got a full-on groove then. So let's duplicate this across. Oops, wrong one. Uh, there. So we've now got a very nice call and response groove. And that is the first tip of this video that I think everyone should always remind themselves of. And the next thing is going for some swing. So I'm gonna click the groove button here. I've done a tutorial just on swing. So if you wanna go a bit more deeper into that, go and watch the other video, but hit this. Then we can choose the swings here. I like to use the one called Quantize T. We're having quantize T, 16 T, sorry. Drag this across. And then I can just turn this quantize down to zero. And then I can just turn the percentage up to how much I want to swing. That sounds good to me. And 
Nice. So, once we've got the swing, we've got the groove down, I want you to start thinking about the attack, decay, sustain, release. So, if we now listen to the clap, for example, this is what's sticking out to me straight away. If you look at the one-shot mode, if you click the channel up here, I want you to click classic. Then watch this. Really shape the shape the sound then. Same here. Click classic. Now, bring the sustain down. Ha, classic. And just to make this point clear, Bringing sustain and decay down isn't better or worse, it's just a different kind of vibe. Like now, the groove is much tighter. The snare is probably a bit short. See that? It's a bit lo longer. And that sounds nice. We turn the swing up. So, we've got call and response, swing, then the attack, decay, sustain, release, which is the transients, and next, we're going to look at some processing. So, it sounds very vanilla at the moment, especially this. So, how could we make this sound better? First things first, we could use some reverb, so we could create a send and return right click insert return track and i've reiterated this a lot so i'm pretty sure most of you will be using center returns but we could then use reverb by ableton let's go to audio effects reverb and we could go we'll go room we will do drum room and then we're going to watch this Turn the reverb off. Straight away. And that reverb is giving it some space, some character. Some width. Can you hear this, guys? No reverb. Reverb. There's just some flavor there now. Normally, I would not recommend putting reverb on the kick, but because we've done this in a drum rack, we can only send the whole rack to the sender return. I think there is a way to do it individually, but I can't remember how to do it. So I would never usually reverb a kick, but this sounds cool. So reverb is always my first go-to. And next, it would be some saturation or distortion. So for this, I'm going to go Overdrive by Ableton. Wrong channel. And we're going to bring the dry wet down. We could really go for it if we wanted. But in this case, it sounds pretty nice. That's 
Nice. It just takes a bit of the top end off. We could put this on the heart. We could maybe go harder on the heart. That sounds really nice. Try out the snare. Claps actually a bit too. Turn the dry wet down. So distortion is something I always like to do in subtle amounts. There's no right or wrong, but I think a bit of crunch is nice. And I tend to leave the EQ off until a bit later on. And I always like to put something on the percussion. So if we listen to this conga. Sounds good, right? But how can we make it sound better? Firstly, it's very straight. We could maybe go left or right. Then we could put this snare on the left. I'm going to get rid of this conga there because they're overlapping and doesn't sound that good. So I don't want the snares and the congas playing at the same time because they're dancing together. So we're going to try some delay on this and it can create a really, really nice space on your drums. So we can go for any of these. We could use any kind of delay, but I'm going to use Ableton's, we can go modulated delay. I'm actually just going to create one myself. So I'm going to put delay on, turn dry wet down. Even that's cool. snare a sec hear that groove now coming from there and you can play around with all the settings I did do a video on echo as well but play around the parameters I think the fade's good Apple Watch they can get you anywhere these, de these days guys can you ring my Apple Watch Drop it down. And then I want to get some more movement on this conga. So I'm going to go for a phaser. If we take this off now, this delay on the phaser. And now it's evolving really, really nicely. And we could do this on the hat. And I'm going to come to this in a second, a bit more processing on 16th grooves. But we could put a phaser on here. Let's go look at some presets. Look at that. So now if we turn, we can actually duplicate this whole thing. I will do it, no effects. I could turn this off, flanger, overdrive, clap off, and then this off as well. And then we start comparing then to some basic, basic, basic processing. And we can even do this over just this one loop. So you can even hear what it sounds like. 
just a one groove thing. So. So that's just the groove repeated. And then with the 60, with the call and response, even take the reverb off that one as well to compare it compared to the other one just very basic just that call and response with the kick See that's super upfront, super dry, no depth. So the clap sounding very generic to me, and that's something that I hear in a lot of tracks that people's claps aren't quite aren't quite there. So to do this, I would definitely try and put some reverb on it. You could even do it an insert. Because I've done this a drum rack, we can't do a send and return separately. Um, but what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go to the drum groove. I'm actually gonna offset the clap slightly. So if we zoom in, I want to highlight them all and actually put them back. So they're not straight on the beat. On this subtle track delay, you can do it with the congas. And by slightly nudging things, you can almost get a hardware-like groove. Because when you're recording things from hardware, you get slight movement. And this can really add character to your track. So if we put them all back in time, all these, if we do that, press Command U. It's all perfect, slightly out. You get a bit of a wider crunch. So this will be nice to do, I think, on all of them. To be fair, we don't need to for this demo. But having this bit of imperfection, you see? Slightly off the grid, all hitting differently. It's going to further add to the vibe in your track. So, a golden nugget which I've really identified in my own music that I'm missing sometimes is this continual movement that makes the track almost inject a bit of pace into it. So I'm going to create its own MIDI track now. I'm going to call this, I call them 16th grooves. And what we need for this is any kind of short, sharp percussion this, let me show you some examples. So vintage drum pack, we'll go to any of these. This is good. Something like this, a block. Or you can use a hat, a kick, a snare. Doesn't really matter if it's short, this. So what I want to do is put the sustain down. And we're just going to do, we're going to do like this. We're going to just do a 16th. And it'll go all the way through. Uh, because typically people do this with hats, but we're going to do it with the percussion now. And we're going to first put something which creates movement. Flangers or phases are great. So we've already used that flanger rebound. Watch this. Flanger spinning. Phaser feedback. And then what we can do is once we find what we like, we could start using less note. So that's a nice groove. And we have it playing like this. So it's not necessarily going continually on the 16th, but it's a groove which is going forward, quite repetitive, and it gives that pace to the track. So you could get some effects from the flanger phaser. Then I would recommend going for some kind of auto filter as well. So auto filter, going for this preset. And we could turn the LFO up. So 
and it's probably the biggest thing i think a lot of tracks miss is this bit of weirdness that keeps the track grooving then we could even go for some chorus on it to make it go wide uh let's go audio effects chorus chorus classic look how wide that is now then we could even do some delay let's do simple chorus So now if we compare that to the previous groove that had no effects. And I hear this a lot. Like you get, na that sounds decent. It sounds decent. But it's very straight, predictable, no movement. Hear this. And then when you get a killer bass line in, let's go for... Uh, the SQ8, I'm using that a lot recently. Let's hope we don't crash. Uh, let's go bass. 90s. So we're just experimenting now with random stuff. And already, that groove, it's got depth, classiness. But watch when we take away the 16th groove. It's crazy. Just gives it that consistent. So guys, that is some absolute golden nuggets for your drums. I would implement all of them and they should become a part of your production process every time. It will change your life. And never forget the basics are always the most effective. If you've got any questions or any feedback, please let me know. And if there's any other exact tutorials like this you wanna see, let me know and I can get them done for you. So thank you very much for watching. Do not forget to check out the Syntho app. There is a 10 pound trial. All the links will be attached below, including the samples that I used today. And yeah, let me know what else you'd like to see on the YouTube.